If you watched a television ad or read a magazine or newspaper in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, chances are you saw the work of St. Catherine's native Terry O'Malley and his advertising company, Vickers & Benson. O'Malley donated artifacts from his career in the business to the Brock Archives, and archivist David Sharon invited us to pay a visit. We love this collection because it reaches so many people. It's a Canadian collection with that local root that we admire and, and love so much. So this is one of those collections when someone says, what do you have at Brock? This is one of the top three all the time. This is nostalgia, it's history, it's business history, it's research that can be done on this. This collection has everything and that's why we love to show it off. For 22 years, O'Malley has sponsored an annual lecture in advertising and marketing at Brock. Because of that, housing his archives at the university made perfect sense. It was always conversations on how we can connect the archives with the talk that's happening now and how we can show off the collection so the students can come up and say, oh, we have this here. I'm going to go up to the 10th floor of the tower and see what a career in uh, advertising could be. So we've seen those students come up. Uh, we've seen their uh, assignments that they've done with these things. We've seen them come back afterwards just with natural curiosity. And I swear a few times I almost quit my job to go into advertising myself after going to a few lectures. It was O'Malley's work on the lectures with a Brock professor that led him to donating all of his material to the university. Exposure, we get the kids to know what the craft is. Uh, at the highest level, I would hope, and expose them. And I had great support from these guys, particularly Professor Broderick, who really was the, the driving force here at the school. We had some unbelievable young people. Why did you donate your archives to Brock's archive? Same, same reason, uh, be a companion with the lecture, that uh, now you've heard this, but we've got to come on upstairs and, and see the rest of it and why, to know why. One of O'Malley's proudest moments was a pro bono campaign he created focusing on pollution. The award-winning campaign was inspired by some local landmarks in the Garden City. Maybe we should be starting right at home, or maybe we should write to our member, our mayor, our premier, or even our prime minister to ask for a little protection for our part of the world. The simple requests, all we have to do is do it. It was spurred on by the old canal and having walked down St. Paul Street as a kid, sometimes covering your nose because the stench was so bad, or when you drove up the hill to uh, Thorold and, and went by the three paper mills, and there was, it was just ran, you know, you, or you'd go to the municipal beach and there'd be a snow fence, you couldn't go on the water, uh, and these guys at least were trying something. But, I mean, I'm sure you could run the Nice World ad tonight and it, you know, 30, 40 years later, and it's still the same. That ad won you a ton of awards. Cannes Film Festival, the Clio Award in the United States, a crowning achievement for you? One of them, uh, mainly because it's so simple. That's what I liked, and where you could see some of the stuff. Is I liked clarity and simplicity. What do you hope that students get out of this collection? Aspiration, I guess. I want to do this, uh, or it, that's how it's done. I didn't know that. You know, no, no one really knows, like I, I sit at home, I know, I watch that commercial, I'm trying to figure out who shot it, who did it, who wrote it, what agency, yeah. what's the strategy, that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, to get them to think like that. The O'Malley Collection is incredibly detailed with storyboards, scripts, marketing plans, and correspondence that all shed light on how some of Canada's biggest advertising campaigns came together. That's the real strength of the collection. You can get everything from the initial brainstorming to the finished product and everything in between, letters to clients and the back and forth on how something gets created. So it's really the entire creative process from start to finish uh, and there's a variety. Uh, it could be a campaign that they ran for seven, eight years. It could be something they pitched in, were not successful in, but it's all here in the archives. We are just thankful they never threw anything out and Terry had the foresight to make sure that it's preserved in an archive somewhere and we're very fortunate that he chose Brock. A big thank you goes out to Terry O'Malley for meeting us on the 10th floor of the Schmoen Tower. Our visits to the Brock archives are a regular feature here on The Source. Tune in next month for another look through some fascinating history housed at the university.